What's up, my people? You know me, and you know I love to read. The more you read, the more you really understand and get to know God. Reading God's Word can show you all the really cool things there are to learn about Him. And I can think of one extremely awesome story from the Bible to show you what I mean. Check this. Jesus was super busy traveling around, teaching people, and healing those who were sick and hurting. Everyone was amazed at the things he was saying and doing, and news of his awesomeness was spreading like wildfire. One day, Jesus was traveling to Nazareth, the town where he grew up. You heard that right, even Jesus had a hometown, and he landed there because he was about to teach people something they never forget. Our story picks up on the Sabbath day, which means it was church day. So Jesus went to worship at the synagogue, just like he did every Sabbath day. At one point in the service, Jesus stood up to read, because that's what people did back then. And you best believe, if Jesus was talking, people were going to be listening. He was reading from a book of the Bible called Isaiah, and he turned to one part and read it out loud. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. He sent me to tell prisoners that they are free and to tell the blind that they can see again. He sent me to free those who have been treated badly and to announce that the time has come for the Lord to show his kindness. After reading, Jesus sat back down. Everyone was locked in to every word Jesus had to say at this point. Jesus knew he had their attention, so he began to speak again. He said, While you heard me reading these words just now, they were coming true. And Jesus was right. God had sent him to tell everyone how much God loves them and wants to help them. The people had been waiting on God to send someone to fix their friendship with him. And that's what Jesus was there to do. Can you imagine Jesus standing right in front of your face talking to you? Cool, huh? So Jesus spent three whole years traveling around and showing people what they can learn about God when they read his word. And as the people listened to Jesus, he opened up their minds to understand what God's words meant for them. Awesome, right? Here's the deal. Reading God's word helps us to see who he really is and what he wants us to do. Just like spending time with a friend will help us get to know them better, when we take the time to read God's word, we will grow in our friendship with him. And since I'm always trying to grow my friendship with God, I've got some reading to do. Because the coolest part You can never stop growing in your friendship with God. My people! I'm so excited you're hanging with me today. It's me, Jack. Right now, we are out in some extremely cold winter weather. I'm talking temps below zero. That's right, we brave in it. See, the thing about winter weather is that it can be really cool or it can be really dangerous. You just gotta know the right things to do and don't do. Check it. Being out in God's beautiful creation allows us to see how awesome God really is but I've learned a thing or two along the way, and I've taken it upon myself to create what I call the Winter Extreme Survival Guide. This is my own personal list of things you need to know if you're going to be staying alive in the Sub-Zero. Here's the deal. When you're out in the cold, you gotta make sure you're wearing the right stuff, because frostbite is a real thing. You're gonna need a heavy coat and some really sturdy boots. And one thing you're most definitely going to want to know is how to build a fire. You heard that right, fire. I know, I know. You're thinking, Jack, snow is made from water and water puts out fire. How can you possibly build a fire on top of frozen water? Well, believe it or not, you can. Here's how you go about it. Grab some dry branches from the bottom of a tree. Look out for a dry spot on the ground, pile that up, and get your fire started. Pretty cool, huh? But that's not all, my friends. This is awesome, too. You may not realize it, but snow can keep you warm. Yeah, you heard that right. If you're feeling that chill that you just can't shake, dig yourself a small tunnel big enough for your body to fit in, then crawl down in there, close up the hole with your backpack, and boom, 
the snow has trapped your body heat and you're all warmed up. Now, just as important as knowing what to do while surviving in the cold is knowing what you cannot do. You got to stay hydrated. But eating snow is not the way to go because it will actually take your body temp even further down. You also need to know what not to eat. Hopefully, you've packed some carb-loaded snacks, but in case you didn't, stay away from eating wild mushrooms. And don't be trying to share a rabbit with the eagle who caught it. Instead, you gotta go for the bugs you find crawling around, or eat the flower buds you find growing on the trees. Hey, they may be slimy or taste like cardboard boxes, but I'd take that over getting sick any day. And I'm catching your snow drift. You're asking yourself where I got the knowledge for my survival guide in the first place. And it's simple, really. I just read and read and read and read. I mean, how else am I gonna learn that kitty litter keeps your feet from slipping while you're out in the icy tundra? Here's the deal, my friends. If you're wanting to learn, you've gotta read. You wanna know why God's great outdoors are so awesome? Read. You wanna know why God created the great outdoors in the first place? Read. You're hearing me right. Reading is the way to survive and thrive. So what are we waiting for? Let's get after it.
and I read your word. Open up my heart, I want to worship you. When I get quiet and I read your word. My father, you're my best friend, and you love me, you hear me, that will never end. Hey! I'll seek you, I'll find you, I'll give you my 